Supercomputing 2025 came here to St. Louis where I live and there's tons of cool stuff to see here from like servers that will blow your hair back and uh, dry your clothes in like five minutes all the way down to like quantum computers, cooling technology, all kinds of insane things. But when I came here, I came here to see a few things and mostly it's the people. And uh, one of the things that I saw immediately caught my eye, obviously, is a cluster of Raspberry Pis. And uh, that was at EPCC. And I got to talk to somebody who was on the team that built that and ask him about what it's for. So, yeah, my name's Nick. I am from the University of Edinburgh uh, in the UK. Can you explain what this is? Yeah, so this is called WeArchie. It's our mini supercomputing cluster. It's developed out of a whole bunch of Raspberry Pis. And the idea of this is really for outreach. So we've got massive crazy supercomputers. We're the UK national supercomputing service but when we want to go out and tell people actually how HPC impacts their everyday lives it's so valuable having something like this to show the core concepts. So what we've got here is we've got um, 16 compute nodes, we've got um, a login node and a file system node, exactly the same organization that we'd have in a, in a big machine but the key thing are the lights and the first four lights are the load on each core and then we've got memory usage and temperature. And what that enables them to see is the connection between running things on it and actually getting results back. Our first one of quite a few demos, our first one was actually a design a dinosaur demo. Um, and that's from a group that um, were trying to analyze how dinosaurs would have moved. But then we moved on from that to this aircraft wing demo using computational fluid dynamics. It's like the 101 of, um, of high performance computing. And what they can do is they can see if their, their 757 with their wing would take off or whether it would um, unfortunately crash. But nobody dies because we've got life rafts which come out. But really the key point we're making to them is the fact that we're taking little bits of that wing, parallelizing it across all these different nodes, and then the answers, the individual answers come back together for a final answer that we then can use for impacting real world problems. And you mentioned RISC-V. Do you have another demo with a RISC-V machine too that you take to some places? Yes, yeah, so we've ported all our demos onto RISC-V machines. Originally the SpaceMIT and now the P550. Uh, we had a version of this at the RISC-V Summit a couple of weeks ago in Santa Clara. And all the delegates there were enjoying uh, designing different aircraft and flying them and, and whatnot. There was actually quite a lot of aviation around there. So I think a lot of them had a, a bit of an advantage over the school kids. Uh, but you'd be amazed the number of aircraft that didn't take off. So uh, uh -huh. it made me somewhat worried about, uh, about, about some of them. Now, speaking of people that inspire youth and uh, kind of bring new people into this, I actually got to talk to some of the teams, the college teams that were doing this competition, a clustering competition. Uh, some of them were doing servers that were in the cloud and other ones were doing servers that they actually had shipped here from wherever they were. And uh, I got to talk to a couple of teams, one on the cloud side and, and one on the bare metal infrastructure side, and asked them about the competition. I'm Alex. I'm representing Georgia Tech at the NDSCC. And, and I am Aiden. I'm also representing Georgia Tech at the NDSCC. So currently we're in the combined NDSCC and SEC booth at the SC25 conference. These booths here, without any uh, har loud hardware, are the NDSCC group who are doing virtualized hardware. And the loud hardware is the teams that were able to compete in person with their own hardware. So as a group, we have four benchmarks that we are uh, competing in. Uh, the whole point of the competition is to try to optimize these benchmarks on the hardware that we're given. Uh, we are compiling HPL, uh, SST, ECE, which is a climate emulator, and uh, a mystery app that we only found out about uh, a couple hours ago which is AXE, which is a uh, particle, particle physics yeah. uh, tracking program. Yeah. We have decided at this point that we are going to go full blast into the mystery application because we think we're doing the best there and we have the best chance of uh, performing very well compared right. to the other teams. You guys had emails yesterday. Yeah. What, do, what do you think? I think it's quite good. It's an acquired taste. Uh, people I've talked to say it's uh, all right, but I, I actually quite liked it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of the thin crust pizzas I've had, it's definitely in the, in the top tier. I'm from New Jersey originally. I cannot say that thin crust is better than New York style pizza. I think I, think I would be executed. You know, on the cloud side, it's funny, you know, if they have a problem with one of the servers, they just kill it and start a new one. But on the bare metal side, that, not so much. So my name is Pierre. Uh, I represent ETH Zurich, which is a university in Switzerland. And so, yeah, we're competing here at SEC at SC25. They didn't have hardware over there, but you guys do. What, what are you doing on this hardware? Yep. So this is actually like our own hardware. Like part of being in like such a team is that you have to find sponsors and partners so that they provide you with the, with the, with the um, hardware. Uh, and they're over there, they're running it on the cloud. So it's more like 
we're more like Formula One because we get access both on like the car and the pilots. And for them, it's more like Formula E where it's like only the pilots. Are there any challenges that you've had getting your hardware here, running it, testing it, all that kind of stuff? Yes, absolutely. So we're coming from Switzerland and to ship such a thing to the US, it takes like probably a month. So we had to ship it like a month early, which means we only had like in total, I think we had two days to train on that cluster because it was a new one. Uh, it has like NVIDIA H200s and stuff. So like, we had to build it and ship it in like less than two days. So that was pretty, pretty tense. Yeah. Are there any advantages you have to having your own hardware with you on site versus running it um, in the cloud? Um, I think it's rather the opposite because at some point, for example, one of our nodes went down. And so then if it goes down, it's kind of your responsibility to, you know, fix it. Whereas if you're running on the cloud, well, if it goes down, first of all, it goes down for everyone. Us, if it goes down, it, it's just for us. We're like the only one penalized. And it's kind of our role to like be able to you know reset it up. So I would say it's it's more challenges, but it's more fun and louder. It's louder, the, yeah, it is. It is completely. You you should see when the all the the 16 GPUs are on with the fans, it's really loud. But also we have a, a sound limit. Actually, we cannot go over 80 decibels. Uh, like the judges, they come with the mic and they literally measure it. One of the other things I was also interested in was there's a lot of different parts of this show that have a lot of PCI Express interconnects and PCI Express uh, networking and CXL memory, all that kind of stuff. One little booth that I found, Dolphin, uh, actually had a really neat demo. And of course, what caught my eye first is they had a Compute Module 5 running part of it. But uh, I'll, I'll let you uh, see how that all works. So I'm Lars. I work for uh, Dolphin Interconnect Solutions. So I, I saw inside this box you have a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5. Can you explain why you have one of those and what this box is doing? So the, uh, the box is a PCI Express expansion box. So if you want to ex um, extend your system and add more PCI Express devices, like a GPU or something, the Raspberry Pi is doing the management of it. So you can manage the uh, PCI Express switch chip on it with the, uh, the BMC. We um, monitor fan speeds or, or that sort of thing. But it is actually connected with uh, PCI Express to the uh, switch chip. We're not currently using it for anything in particular, but we uh, have some ideas for how to play with that uh, part. And I, I saw there's a mini rack here too. Mm -hmm. And all those are connected through all those cables back to the box. What are these three computers doing? So currently, we are playing uh, SuperTrux cards. They are all connected with uh, PCI Express, uh, these kind of cards with uh, PCI Express 5 by 16 to the uh, expansion box. In this case, we're showing that we can share the uh, in Intel Arc B50 GPU with the uh, all three systems running at, on the same GPU at the same time with SRV. I also noticed that on top of here, there's like a camera, but mm -hmm. I've never seen a camera connected with PCI Express. So what is that showing? It's just to show how um, you can do lots of different things with PCI Express. This camera is made by Samia. I hope that's how you pronounce it, at least. <laughs> uh, we have the camera feed running over on one of the nodes there. Right here. Artistically showing the B50 uh, and some blinking lights. <laughs> and, and you had mentioned that the way that that camera works, because I've never, like I said, I never saw one connected like that. It's actually decoding the raw image data on the computer. And as opposed to like a camera with a sensor and the chip that reads the sensor out and, and adds color correction and all that. Yeah, so I'm not an expert on the camera, but <laughs> it's my understanding is that it's more or less raw. And then at least that explains the uh, bandwidth requirement of using PCI Express over uh, something more standard. Have you ever tried connecting a bunch of devices through the switch to the Pi directly? Not yet. But uh, at least personally, it's something I would uh, find fun to do. Um, the kind of things we're doing here where we are sharing a device over this PCI Express network is also something we could then do with the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi itself might not have uh, much use in using those devices, but if it did the enumeration part, then you could share it out to the other ones afterwards. That's something we're looking into. At some point, we could like have Pis as these computers too, but they're not quite as uh, expansive. They probably couldn't do five frames per second decoding <laughs> the video. But I think... But, uh, you would struggle to find use for the Zen 5 by 16 link with a Raspberry Pi uh, at the moment. It could be fun, though. Yeah, it could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> one more little bonus. One thing that I got to do that was very cool was go inside of this little rack area back here. This is Cynet, which runs all the network operations for the whole show floor. They do Wi-Fi, they do wired fiber. They had apparently 13.75 terabits of bandwidth this year. And they have uh, one HPC cluster running somewhere in here. They have Devices like this one is supposedly the price of a Lamborghini, and it, I don't doubt that, judging by who it's made by. And uh, 
there's a, there's a lot of cool test equipment in here too that I got to see that now is on my like 20 years from now wish list because at that point, maybe a Raspberry Pi will do terabits. But anyway, I got to go around inside here and see some of the cool equipment. And there's a whole huge team of people who sets this up for the show, tears it down. The students come and help tear it down. Uh, interestingly enough, many vendors like label the colors by themselves. Here you can see 400 gig connectors and 400 gig optics. Um, with the racks I am working with, here we have one of the most interesting pieces of equipment. This is the Polatis. This is a fiber optic switch. So uh, this is something that allows you to programmably change the path between fibers. So you can basically switch this pair to routes to this pair uh, by, via software. Uh, here we also have our NetSec wrap with uh, 40 gates and firewalls. This is used to basically make sure that we are not transmitting any bad stuff and some bad actors aren't utilizing us for nefarious purposes. This is a new addition that we have. So this is a cluster, an HPC cluster built for the conference by Synet. So some time ago we realized that networking stuff, networking stuff is cool, but we also want an HPC aspect to this conference. So this is this cluster. We have a petabyte of scratch data here. So I don't know if I'll be back next year. I think it's in Chicago, but if it comes back to St. Louis, I'll definitely be here. But uh, hopefully, if you can make it out to one of these and you're interested in HPC, supercomputing, scientific computing, any of that stuff, there's a lot to see here. And uh, I'm glad that I came this year.